Thank you very much, and thank you all for coming to be with us on this very, very special day. It's a special day for us because this is the day that we get to welcome to the San Antonio community a musical voice that perhaps you've never heard of before, or you may have heard his music and didn't know that you've heard his music. Rosano Galante, born in Buffalo, New York, he received his Bachelor of Arts degree in trumpet performance from SUNY, that's State University of New York, Buffalo, in 1992. That same year, he was one of 19 people from around the world to be accepted to the University of Southern California's film scoring program. He studied with the late Jerry Goldsmith. If you don't know who Jerry Goldsmith was, he wrote the scores of Patton. So when you think of, ba -ba -dum -ba -dum, that's him. Uh, who won an Academy Award for his film score for The Omen. In 1999, Mr. Galante moved to California to pursue a career in composition and film orchestration. Since then, he has worked with the two-time Oscar-nominated composer Marco Beltrami, Christoph, Christoph Beck, Brian Taylor, Christopher Lenertz, and Wolfram DeMarco. He has served as orchestrator for over 75 studio films, including Venom, Let There Be Carnage, Blah, Blah, Rambo, Last Blood, Charlie's Angels, Ready or Not, and it goes on and goes, oh, the little mermaid, Ariel's Beginning, oh, Alvin and the Chitlucks, I'm sure you remember that classic, and, so, and some, some things across the, uh, the pond, Die Bluthochzeit, The Blood Wedding, I'm sure that was uh, done in Germany. He's been commissioned to write pieces of music for groups all over the country. He came to us several years ago, you remember it said in his bio that he uh, got a degree in trumpet performance, so of course that means he's one of us, he's a band geek. He played in band in high school. And so uh, his lifelong dream after making money in Hollywood was to turn into a band composer. And I don't know, 10, 15 years ago we started seeing his pieces of music appear in print. And uh, one of the first pieces we had we had a trombone player in the back of the band, Rob Setlick. We hope he's following along on our live stream because he's moved back to Buffalo. But Rob came to us and said, hey, I went to college with that guy. And so we, he had an advocate right here in our band. And as we played more and more of Rosano's pieces over the years, the more I heard of his music, the more I thought we need to have him come to San Antonio and do an entire concert of his music. So about a year and a half ago, we started making the arrangements for all this to happen. Then we called Rosano and we said, these are all the pieces we have in our library. And then he said, well, how about some of these other pieces? So the, the seven pieces that you see on the program tonight that are his, I think you will find them to be charming. The band loves them because, of course, as a trumpet player, he's going to write stuff that the trumpet players love to play. And somehow he's got how to write for horn as well and have the right for oboe and all the various instruments. They are just enthralled, not only with the music that he's written, but with him as our conductor. Would you please welcome to the stage, Mr. Rosano Galante.
Well, my name. Awesome. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, it's nice to see so many faces. Um, I have had such a great time working with this extremely talented ensemble. It's been a great week, and the hospitality and the food, it's been, it's been pretty epic. Uh, I just wanted to say a couple of thank yous. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mark Rogers, for bringing me out here. And then, of course, the heart of Texas Concert Band. I love you all so very much for your amazing kindness and your beautiful musicianship. Um, a little bit about, and of course, the Roosevelt High School. Thank you for this venue. A little bit about the piece you just heard, Landscapes. So I wrote that piece with the images of, say you're in a helicopter with a camera, photographing mountains and, and landscapes. That's kind of what I was, my, my intent with the piece. And originally this piece was only written for five instruments. Two trumpets, a French horn, a trombone, and a tuba. That's usually a, that's called a brass quintet. And someone said, hey, you know what? You should write this for concert band. It would be really fun. And of course, I love a challenge. And so I arranged it for concert band, and there you have it. So. Now the next, the next composition is called A Childhood Remembered. And this piece was actually, I wrote it in memory of a friend of mine who passed away in 2010. The thing is, the piece is not a sad piece. It is a happy piece about childhood memories, the innocence of childhood, amusement parks, cotton candy, funnel cakes, big wheels. So I hope you all sit back, close your eyes, and remember to a simpler time in your life.
Does it go on? Oh, yeah. So, like it or not, you have to hear from me some during this concert. Just as the musicians need to break, the conductor needs to break as well. Uh, some of you who know what I do for a living, I am the associate editor of Kaiser Productions. So I am on the phone, I'm on email with composers every day. And to me, the second greatest miracle beyond the fact that two people come together and they produce children is that there are people out there who can look at a blank computer screen, who can look at a blank piece of paper, and from their fertile imagination, the sounds that you just heard the band made come forth. And that to me is just amazing. And I've been dealing with people like that my whole life and I just still am completely befuddled by the, the magic and the miracle of someone who can make those sounds out of nothing. But that's who Rosano is. We would like to thank our hosts who have made it so wonderful for us to be here in this hall to perform tonight. Uh, we're at Roosevelt High School. Uh, Sterling Snyder, are you out there where we can see you and, and show you our thanks? If you see Sterling rolling around, he's making sure. Ah, back there, of course, of course we all know. The assistant to do that is Sterling Snyder, who's the head band director here at Roosevelt High School. George Salinas, the assistant band director, uh, may be here as well. But we are so happy to be here. Uh, there are lots of places that we could perform, but we don't want to play in and parking lots. It's so much better for us to be inside and for you to be inside as well. And this particular hall makes the band sound great. We enjoy playing here. Uh, if you want to know some information about the band, one of the ways that you can get some information is to look down at the list of people who play in the band. And if you say, what does it take to play in this band? Well, first of all, you have to play well enough that you can keep up and play the music that we are playing. If you are, look carefully at the names, you'll see that there are a couple of husband and wife combinations in this band. And at the moment, it happens that probably the youngest member of our band performing today is part of a family group. Jack, stand up. How old are you, Jack? 13? 14. 14, and his parents are back in the trombone section. Stand up. Jack is surely the youngest member of the band, and we're not going to embarrass anyone by having them stand up and say, okay, so if you passed your 70th birthday, you know, remain standing, the rest of you sit down. But one of the things that you may glean when you look at the information in our program, it says how many years somebody has played their instrument. So if somebody's been playing their instrument for 50 years, chances are they're not 48. <laughs> you can do the arithmetic. All right, so figure those things out. But if that is who the Heart of Texas Contract Band is. We are thrilled to be here. Uh, we have three other members of the band that we want to point out to you tonight. These are people who didn't have any trouble finding the place to, today because they are members of the Roosevelt High School Band. Would you please stand up? Abby, Miss Kudia. So we are exceedingly proud of these high school kids that they are able to make music with us and do the things that we are doing here. This is, we want to help them understand that there is life after high school band, whether you go in and play with your college band or something like that. We want you to understand that this is where you go. You learn those skills so that you play your instrument well enough, and then when you graduate from high school, we hope that you'll find a community band wherever you are. And one of the things uh, that I have witnessed during my lifetime, and I'm sorry I'm talking so much, you know, I'm bad about this. I've had bassoon students who went on exchanges and decided they wanted to go to Korea. And if you walk into some place like Korea and say, hey, I play bassoon, before 30 minutes has elapsed, your phone will have just exploded with community groups in Seoul who are looking for a bassoon player and want you to play, and you have automatic friends who will take you everywhere and show you where the best kimchi in town is to be found. So it's a really wonderful thing to play your instrument. We want to encourage these kids to stay with it uh, and continue to play with us and with somebody else. Now I'm going to ask Rosano to come back and tell you about the next piece. So this next composition is called It's Only Served. I was asked 
to write a composition in memory of our veterans, uh, those who have survived and those who have also passed. I feel this is a composition of hope and also a composition of grief. I hope you enjoy. Every time one of your friends comes to San Antonio and 
stays at a hotel, eats, at a, eats down on the river walk or rents a car, we get a little bit of that money. But mostly we exist on the generosity of our sponsors. Uh, many of the spots you may have heard this last week on Texas Public Radio are through the generosity of Frost Bank. And we do have other people who don't graciously donate to us. If you flip the, concert, the program over to the back page, you'll see a list of all the stellar people who have been very generous in their contributions to the band. I should point out that the uh, expenses for Mr. Galante to come here and perform with us today were entirely underwritten in memory of his wife by a member of our horn section. Renee, would you stand up? We do have other people in, in the band who graciously donate to us. A member of our trombone section has just purchased a dozen music stands for us, again, in memory of his wife. George, would you stand up? So if you feel so moved that you would like to contribute to the band in some way so that we can continue to offer these performances for you free of charge, you can see that there's a QR code on the front of the program, and we'd invite you to, to uh, follow that. Where it takes you, you'll also find more information about Rosano Galante uh, when you go to that site. Um, but we'd appreciate you doing that. Anything that you would like to do to help the band out, we're glad to accept that with a smile on our face. One, one, one more piece, and then we're going to take a 10-minute intermission. So would you please welcome Rosano once again to tell you a little bit about mischievous behavior. Thank you. This next composition, I was asked to write a piece. Uh, they wanted a piece for a friend, a colleague, who was a music teacher who was retiring. And he was playing lots of jokes on, on the staff and on the students for years and years. So he said, we, we want to surprise him with a kind of a mischievous piece of music, comedic piece of music. So that's why I gave them. I hope you enjoy.
Thank you, sir. That answers my question.
just heard is a concert march called the Symphonians. And I programmed it because it brought a lot of nostalgia when I was in high school. We did that piece and I fell in love with it. Beautiful melodies, not your typical march, uh, more of a concert march. Uh, very romantic. I love it. love it so much. This next piece, uh, that was by Clifton Williams. That was not by me. Uh, the next piece is by me. It's called The Ship in the Mist. And they wanted me to write something about sea shanties. And I, I myself love sea shanties, so I had a great time writing this piece. And if you can visualize a ship emerging from the mist, hanging out for a while, and then heading back into the mist. Hope you enjoy.
You're such a nice audience. Uh, so this next composition, uh, we're going to change the, the tone. It's called Existence Infinite. Now, I was asked to write this in memory of a music teacher who had passed away. What I could say about this piece is my interpretation of emotional loss and grief. Uh, it's very melodic, and there's a sad undercurrent to it. There's also hope to this as well. Uh, I hope you enjoy existence in there.
it's been our pleasure to perform for you. If you're not aware, the musicians on the stage are volunteers. They do this because they love playing in this band. They love playing this music, and they especially love playing for you. Uh, you'll notice that we do some things slightly different here. We don't turn the house lights down. And the reason we don't turn the house lights down is because we want to be able, when we're not playing, to look you in the face and see if we're connecting with you. This is not drama. I've been involved in drama my whole life. I've portrayed, I've portrayed Henry Higgins in My Fair Lady. And when you're doing something like that, you pretend like there's this thing called the fourth wall. We pretend that we can't see you. But just like an athletic event, we feed off your energy. When you are here and you tell us that you like what you're doing, it inspires us to play better. And there's something magical about live music. We know you're there, and we can tell if what we're doing is working for you. Now, this is not the only concert we have on our plate. If you look at the very bottom of the last page of the program, you'll notice that exactly four weeks from today, we will be on the stage of the Theater for the Performing Arts over at Memorial in that school district. And we will be giving a concert, which is the concert once a year, where we invite members of the band who have done some spectacular things to join us and show what they do. So there will be guest conductors on that program. Some people in the band have picked pieces that they want to conduct at the band, and it's always a thrill for them, uh, especially if they work with a middle school or something like that, to stand up in front of a group of 90 players, uh, give a downbeat, and suddenly their sound. Quick side story. When I was at the University of Texas, one of the things that we used to do for alums who wanted to donate lots of money to the band program is we would invite them to make a very substantial contribution to the Longhorn Band, and then they got to conduct uh, the Eyes of Texas at the end of the football game. And so there would be these people who had no sense but a lot of money, and they would drop call up on the uh, the ladder in front of the Longhorn Band, and they say, "What do I do? What do I do?" And it's like, just do this. And as soon as they did that, the Longhorn Band would go, da, 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 da. and they go, oh, <laughs> you know. And of course, the Longhorn Band could play the Eyes of Texas with their eyes closed. So you know, it didn't matter what they did. But a lot of those people had to get fairly greased up before they could stand up in front of the Longhorn Band. So. The you know, members of the band will get to conduct the band. We also have a member of the band who is a composer, and we're going to perform <coughs> one of his pieces. It will be the world premiere of Satara Overture by Marty Hill. He is not with us today because he's been in the hospital with pneumonia, but he's generally speaking back in the trombone section. But another highlight of that concert is Paul Cohen, who's probably the world's greatest expert on the saxophone is going to come to San Antonio and perform with us. He's going to perform. He has, I will invite you, see the name Paul Cohen. Go home and type that name into YouTube. And one of the first things that will come up is a little video of him showing a, a few instruments in his own personal collection. He owns, band, more than 200 saxophones and related instruments. And so he's going to come and play an alto sax solo and a solo on a piece uh, on an instrument called the cano sax. A cano sax. It's a very interesting thing. So he'll be here, and that will be a highlight too. And those pieces, the, uh, the, the pieces that we will be performing will be kind of world premieres. These are pieces that were written 100 years ago and they got lost. So they've been discovered, and he will be performing with us then. And then after that, make plans to be with us on July 4th. If the weather is terrible, you want to come inside to Trinity Baptist Church. And if the weather is wonderful, it will be hot, so come indoors to Trinity Baptist Church <laughs> and enjoy our July 4th concert. 3 o'clock, both of those days. The July 4th concert is the only concert all year long that we don't do on Sunday. And why do we not do it on Sunday? Because July 4th isn't always on Sunday. And so we always want to do that concert on the day itself. Come to enjoy the concert and go home and finish your barbecuing and, you know, stay up late and watch all the fireworks from your neighbors and stuff like that. So please put those events on your calendar. Uh, one last thing, you know, I mentioned go to YouTube, type in Paul Cohen. Also go to YouTube and type in Rosano Galante. We played seven of his pieces today, but there's something like 70 out there. 
wonderful music. And of course, we couldn't play everything that he's written today, but there's wonderful music for you to explore. So put his name in your YouTube and make a listening list of the wonderful pieces that he's written. And in a couple of weeks, we'll have these posted so you can remember that you were there when you heard these pieces being played by the Heart of Texas Concert Band. Unfortunately, all good things have to come to a close, so here's Rosano to tell you about the last piece on the program, The Falls. Thank you so much. I have had such a great week, a great time in San Antonio. I've never been here before, and I love it. I'm going to have to move here eventually, I guess, right? I, I would like to play trumpet in the band. That would be really fun for me. So a little, about, a little bit about the last piece. Uh, I don't think I even told you this story. So I wrote this piece when I was probably 27, so a very long time ago, probably 25 years ago. Uh, and it was actually part of a bigger piece. It was actually, the piece was called Land Sketches, and it actually had two movements. The first movement was called The Canyons, and the second movement was called The Falls. And it had a premiere, it was all fine, but I just left it alone for years. It needed, needed some, I didn't feel the whole piece would work together, but I felt the, the falls would be a, a nice a composition all on its own. And basically, if you can picture a big, huge, beautiful waterfall, that is my intent with this composition. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you all, I had a blast. 